And welcome again to the big match. And again on the programme today, we have Manchester United on the rampage. That's just one of three outstanding first division matches we have for you today. Our main match, though, is one with a real sting in its tail as we take in West Ham against Leicester City. Moore and Robson. Again, the angle wasn't right. Barnes and a great save by Shilton. Also, Huddersfield against Manchester United. Dun Sadler back. A good shot! A good save! And Wolves against Southampton. Oh, and what a goal! No, no! It's been... Well, that one was disallowed, but we have 11 new goals for you to enjoy, so a lot of very good action indeed to get through today. Uh, we also, of course, take out time once more to look at uh, some of your letters that we're always so glad to get from you. But now it's time to get on with the football, and for our first stop, it's Upton Park, where even in West Ham's recent thin years, the crowds have always been good ones. Today's is 31,000. And they've come to see a West Ham side that really is in good form. Led by Bobby Moore, who spent Friday at home ill, and indeed was not feeling himself yesterday, and Clyde Best, who who's been suffering all week with a niggling ankle injury. So West Ham, in their good form, are happy to announce an unchanged side. Now Leicester City, with skipper David Nish, finding it this a season of struggle, but now able to field just about their strongest team. And in that team, three players that London fans, of course, will know very well indeed. One of them, Keith Weller, so recently with Chelsea. Then, of course, there's Alan Birchinal, formerly of Crystal Palace. And then the third one, John Samuels, ex-Arsenal, all £100,000 men. The referee today is schoolmaster Bill Gow of Swansea. And in the stand, West Ham fan Reg Varney from On The Buses, flanked by Mr Jimmy Hill and Mr John Freeman. So Leicester City then, all in white, defending the goal to our left, get us away. Leicester, only uh, three off the bottom of the first division situation of course that West Ham knew well enough at the end of uh, or most of last season situation that certainly doesn't help relaxed football and I would think Leicester perhaps just a little bit of tense uh, coming to a West Ham side who are very much informed with only one defeat in their last 11 games Lampard now for West Ham to Brooking for Clyde Best Robson Robson now playing very much more in the middle of the field and a good ball that finds Billy Bonds on the right is Redknapp, and the throw to Leicester City. In fact, Leicester has splashed out all this money on uh, men that they hope will score goals for them, and certainly they need them. They've not scored in the last three games, and in fact have scored only three in the last seven games. Bobby Moore now, back to Bobby Ferguson. So the need for Leicester goals is great. Foul by Manley there on Jeff Hurst. And the free kick to West Ham. And it'll be Bonds to take it. Although usually they wait for Bobby Moore to take it. In fact, the uh, ball is going back a few more yards, exactly where Bobby Moore can take this free kick now for West Ham. Cross to nod it away as far as Samuels. Very coolly indeed. He looked for a moment as though he might be in trouble. And then coolly indeed playing it wide of Hurst for Shilton. Ball must have come off Birchinall because the linesman was flagging that it's a West Ham throw. Indeed it is. And Billy Bonds to take it. But stealing too many yards for the liking of Mr Gow, the referee, and so he'll have to take it again. Hurst to Robson. Robson, who had a very fine game, particularly in the first half against Leeds in that drawn League Cup game here on Wednesday, but now it's Samuels to Weller. Putting it forward for the chunky Fern to chase it, and a mix up there, and Weller! Oh my goodness, and Ferguson just holding on to that one! Hurst. And Samuels. Samuels really is already making a mark on the middle of the field in this game, but now it's Hurst again, with Lampard faithfully going outside him, inside to Robson now. Strong challenge by Glover. Lampard. Turned a little shorter there for Best, hoping that Best can make something of it. And a shot by Robson! No more than a foot wide. And Shilton wouldn't have seen it. Yeah. 
So Shilton with the goal kick for Leicester. Virginal going in hard on this one, and it had to be the fist, it's falling to Weller, and my goodness, that's dangerous and as cool as you like. Ferguson gets that one at the second goal from Virginal. Virginal and Weller very nearly creating a goal there for Leicester. And Hurst again getting up well to knock that down for Brooking. Still Brooking going on, my goodness, and that almost beats Shilton. McDowell again. Redknapp trying again to get behind that. Uh, this defence has cost him for Robson, and my goodness, how did Shilton get that one? Leicester claiming that that ball was over the line when uh, Redknapp crossed it, and they hesitated for a fraction. Robson didn't, and luckily for Leicester, neither did Shilton. So right on half-time, that nearly was... The first goal of the game. Redknapp with the corner. And Hurst foiled by the diving header of Cross, Taylor to Moore. An outstretched boot and it's Lampard. Moore again. This time for Redknapp, no Lampard instead. Flicked through nicely for Brooking, and down he goes. And a free kick is given, but an indirect free kick. So, Manley, I'm no doubt very relieved that it should have been an indirect free kick and not a penalty. And the Leicester wall at this moment, about four yards off the ball. And now they've moved to seven, but there it is, and Best trying to get in with his header. McDowell right up there, Weller right back. Lampard to play it wide again, too wide for his skipper Bobby Moore, and Moore couldn't keep it in. And that should have been a simple and an accurate pass from Frank Lampard. Glover stealing yards. And there goes the whistle for half-time, which has really been uh, dominated by West Ham, but some good play in the midfield by John Samuels for Leicester City, and most certainly at the back by the ever-reliable John Schoberg. Still to come for you to enjoy on the big match this afternoon, highlights of Huddersfield against Manchester United and Manchester City against Everton. The half-time score here at Upton Park is West Ham United nil, Leicester City nil, and we'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes. So West Ham get us away then at the start of the second half against a very defensive-minded Leicester City. Signs are that Leicester have come here to make sure of at least a point. Very rarely have they had more than two men up in the first half. McDowell now with the throw for Bobby Moore. Shaking off the physical challenge of Alan Birchenall to Lampard. Best versus Schoberg, and this time the head of Best nodding it back for Brian Robson, and Clyde Best for a moment looked as though he'd escaped Schoberg. Robson going on, and a goal kick. Tommy Taylor. Lampard. Best. Nodded in nicely there for Brooking. Played on for Best. Moore. And Robson. Again, the angle wasn't right. Bonds! And a great save by Shilton. Bonds caught that beautifully. And Shilton palmed it over magnificently.
And so it's Redknapp with the corner for West Ham. That could so easily have been the goal to break the deadlock, but for the brilliance of Shilton, and there's the corner. Best trying to get in on it, but in fact, it's a goal kick. Weller, Bertinor, Weller, Lampard very dogged and determined, Best, good play by Clyde Best there, and now Robson de Bonds and West Ham coming forward again, Redknapp, a little bit of luck there for Harry Redknapp, but a look, good looking cross, Bonds to follow it in, and a hammer one there, looking to hit one, more to try one, best to have a go, and best to have another go, and now Robson, now best, and still it won't get through that packed Leicester City defence. That was defence in enormous depth, and never once did West Ham get a free shot at goal. Redknapp, Bonds, No, he took too long and tried too much. Brooking, trying to squirm it through again. And in fact, I think it's uh, Schoberg who is perhaps a little bit winded by it all. He must have taken something in the stomach. Most of the Leicester defenders did during that barrage. Fern. McDowell, Bonds, back to Ferguson, another enormous kick from Ferguson, Manley, Schoberg, and he couldn't stop giving away the corner. So Schoberg is going to be in the thick of it now. Whitworth at the near post, Nish at the far post, and West Ham pumping men forward. Lampard, Redknapp, crossed again towards Best and Cross getting his head to it though. Lampard to drive one! Straight into the arms though of Peter Shilton. Best, Robson and Moore. Best, found very nicely because that just floated over the head of Schoberg. Samuels, selling a nice dummy on Best and finding Keith Weller. Glover's made a spirited burst down the left and burchnell has gone down the right, but it's Samuels again. And a cross that goes off more, but straight into the arms of Ferguson. Robson. McDowell. Billy Barnes, Lampard, Best was being pushed by Schoberg who was levering himself up on uh, the West Ham players back to get a little more height, it'll be Bobby Moore to take the free kick, play for McDowell, McDowell trying to line something up and Brooking Looking down, almost in surprise to find the ball at his feet. Ferguson, in fact, a little slow. It seemed to come to that one, but the punch was effective. Hurst, more. Hurst again. McDowell. Spirit for the moment seems to have gone out of West Ham. They had a very good burst at the opening part of this half, but they were thrown back again by a very efficient Leicester defence. And at the moment, they look in a bit of a loss as to how to break through. Brooking to Moore. If anyone can find the key, it must be Moore. There's the cross, and Shilton grabbing that one well above the head of Best. 
Samuels to Birchenall. Oh, and Fern! Now this is a chance for Leicester with Rodney Fern, and he's played it wide. Well, that undoubtedly was just about the first real clear chance that Leicester have had in the whole match. West Ham pushing so many men forward in their search for goals, allowing this bloke the freedom, and Ferguson coming quickly out of the, his goal really to make it more difficult for Fern. And so Ferguson now with a goal kick. Certainly a warning for West Ham, though. Fern, Moore, and Brooking. Lampard, but Samuels looks very much as though Leicester have regained their grip and their poise in the middle of the field. Weller, leaving it now for Glover. But three Leicester players against six from West Ham. Still Glover. Weller, played through for Fern. And my goodness, Redknapp was back in the net for time just as uh, Fern was about to lift that left foot back. And Weller now in a bit of trouble, needing a bit of attention. Must have been caught by a West Ham player as he flicked that ball through for Fern. Well, Bobby Moore on his haunches at the near post. Clearly needs to get his men going. And incidentally, while Keith Weller has been getting a bit of attention in the centre circle, Malcolm Manley has been getting a bit of attention from the West Ham trainer Rob Jenkins. Bobby Ferguson telling everybody where he wants them to be for this corner. Frank Lampard at that far post. So Manley's all right, so too is Weller. And here comes the corner now for Leicester City. More to nod it away, only as far as Glover. Nish, Glover. Oh, and that leaves the field free now for Billy Bonds. Clyde Best outside him. Weller coming back very quickly. Best now. Straight at Manley. But West Ham's throw. Bonds. Wanting to find an overhead and look for Robson. But now it's Hurst. Moore. Almost beautifully played there for best, but uh, Nish sticking out the foot. That looked like handball by Birchenall, but it's Hurst. Brooking. Redknapp on the outside. Moore. Brooking. And Redknapp, and he's all right. And then almost there by Robson. A good piece of play by Whitworth. And finally, Birchner, I think it was, who hooked it away. To Frank Lampard. Crossed the game there for Brooking. Hit this time, and what a save! What a monumental save by Peter Shilton. From Brooking, it was dipping all the time. Hit first time and perfectly. And it seemed to have gone over Shilton's head. And somehow he grasped his way back there to push it over. Magnificent piece of world-class goalkeeping. Now Manley is in fact in trouble and it looks as though he's being taken off. So Alistair Brown, who is a substitute and a striker, is coming on. Well, the crowd still buzzing with that tremendous save by Shilton. Alistair Brown. And here comes the corner now for West Ham. Best looking for that one with his head, but again, the head of Schoberg was there first. Lampard. Of course, Brown coming on as a striker will mean a slight rearrangement at the back for Leicester. Whitworth, 
Well, he's only nodded that as far as Robson. Bonds, best to look for it. And West Ham, if anything, a little slow to react to that one. Brown, Samuels. Whitworth. And now Weller. Glover. Robson. West Ham wanting to hit it quickly forward. Hurst trying to nod it on into the path of best. Samuels right back there. Moore. Weller. And now Birchinall. Now something might be on because there are four of Leicester and four of West Ham back. Now there are more West Ham defenders back as Birchinall finds Nish. Nice ball there to Brown. Birchinall trying to play it back to him again. Bobby Moore now. With seven minutes to go. Robson. Taylor. Played for Hurst. Redknapp. McDowell. Robson and Redknapp. Great concentration in defence there. Robson hoping to hook that one just inside the far post, but hooking it wide. Beautifully taken on his body, though, to give him any sort of chance at all. Lampard. Best going for it. And Hurst is right there with him. Hurst with a chance. And there it is. That will do. And Hurst has scored. The first mistake that Leicester have made in defence. And so that first real mistake in the Leicester defence gives an opening for Hurst. And he makes no mistake. So Jeff Hurst's fifth goal of the season and only five minutes left. The extraordinary thing was how slow Leicester were to react after they'd been so quick to react to everything. Cross was in there, Shilton too was a little slow to come for it. And now West Ham are ahead and Bonds to take it up for it. Redknapp, Bonds, Brooking, well that'll be a great disappointment for Jimmy Bloomfield there, the Leicester manager, the side defended so well and he a former West Ham player himself. And you wouldn't expect Ron Greenwood there on the right to show his feelings, but no doubt he's relieved. Brown. So that's the sort of punishment you get in the first division at this sort of level, one mistake. And it's a mistake that, more often than not, is fiercely punished. And now Cross. Well, Shilton, in fact, if anything, was just, it seemed, a little bit slow to react and come out of that long ball. But, my goodness, he's kept Leicester afloat for so long in this game. So now Weller to go across and take the throw for Leicester City with three minutes to go.
Taylor missed jumping is uh, missed jumping there and a goal by Cross. Cross has equalised. The man who was so responsible for the goal at the other end now has equalised for Leicester City with three minutes got to go. Well, while the West Ham defence stood back for a second, cross struck and Leicester are level. So 1-1. One, one. And now Brown. Well, what a tremendous finish we've got now. Two goals in the last five minutes and Fern. Taylor there to give away the corner. And I suppose when you've uh, seen Leicester defend for so long, you wonder why they came with so many defensive ideas when they can strike out as quickly and as effectively as that. So Bobby Moore, perhaps thinking that they got two points, now facing this corner and maybe looking to save one. Nish with the corner, but Moore to nod it away. Glover to take the throw. And there goes the final whistle. No goals for 85 minutes and two in the last five minutes. Graham Cross, who was right at the centre of the storm that allowed West Ham to go in and score with Jeff Hurst, the number nine. And then Cross himself scoring the equaliser for Leicester City. So there we are, a dramatic finish to the game. And a final score here at Upton Park, which reads West Ham United 1, Leicester City 1. So a good finish and a 1-1 draw and still to come for you to enjoy on the big match today we have highlights of Huddersfield against Manchester United and Wolves against Southampton. I suppose one of the puzzling aspects of West Ham's performance yesterday was that it took them so long to find a breakthrough. Uh, I've seen them now twice in the past week against Leeds and against Leicester and in both those games they must have had all of 80% of the game and yet in 180 minutes of football just one goal to show for it. I've no doubt uh, Clyde Best's niggling ankle injury had something to do with that but then let's give them credit too, so too did the wonderful defensive barriers put up by both Leeds and Leicester that had plenty to do with it as well. Ironically, the one mistake that Leicester made yesterday cost them the goal. Cross and Schoberg, I thought, were magnificent in the way that they'd handled Hurst and Best. And yet it was a mistake with Cross at the centre of it that caused all the trouble. That long clearance out of defence, and Best not for the first time in the afternoon, putting defence under pressure from those sort of clearances. Cross slips, and Hurst snaps on a chance that he so rarely misses. You might say that at that moment, Best could be standing in an offside position, although we can't see outside the camera's range whether perhaps another defender was putting him onside. But certainly Hurst and Best are delighted, and Bobby Ferguson seems pretty pleased as well. And the West Ham fans must have left Upton Park with plenty to talk about. And certainly uppermost in their minds must have been the magnificent form of the Leicester goalkeeper, Peter Shilton. I suppose it's not unfair to say that had not Shilton been in that form, West Ham could easily have won by four or even five goals. Uh, he really was superb, and in fact, uh, Ron Greenwood, the West Ham manager, was saying afterwards that one save that Shilton made just before half-time from Robson compared very favourably indeed with that famous save that Banks made against Pelle in the last World Cup. Here, first of all, is Shilton with this save before half-time. You'll see that he's at the near post at this moment, and now he's got a gallop across that goal as Robson hits a header very firmly indeed, and somehow he gets down with tremendous agility uh, to push that uh, ball round the post. A real world-class save, but how does that save compare with the save that Gordon Banks made in Mexico against the fabulous Pelly? Let's check up and look for ourselves. There goes Cantino, he's onside. That's a good cross ball, it's got a! And a fantastic save by Banks! Both tremendous saves, of course. The point being that, that Shilton really had more ground to make than Gordon Banks did for his because Shilton was at the near post when that ball came across. So British goalkeeping in very good hands with Banks and Shilton and Ray Clements and to me, as good as anybody this season, Pat Jennings of Spurs and Ireland. Incidentally, you may be wondering why Jimmy Hill's not here today. In fact, I can tell you that at this very moment he's flying towards Kuwait, of all places, where he's going to play football for an old internationals 11 with the likes of Sir Stanley Matthews, Jimmy Greaves, Johnny Haynes and a lot of others as well. And I'm quite sure if by some vast mismanagement Jimmy scores a goal, then we might even get that on film for you next weekend.
Now let's have some more action, and for this, in fact, we go to the Midlands, where, in fact, goalkeepers had a very tough day of it. The pictures come from ATV, the commentator is Hugh Johns, as we pick up Wolves against Southampton, and Wolves are the team in the plain shirts. Derek Parkin, looking for the long one. Easy interception. It's Jerry Taylor, number five, in place of uh, Frank Munro. Still having trouble with that leg injury of his. Because though it might keep Frank Munro out of the Scottish squad at Hampden Park on Wednesday. First free kick of the afternoon. Handball giving the kick to Wolves. John McCall, again the long one. Dugan. Park in for Wagstaff to chase. Fry is with Wagstaff, as he has been from the kickoff. Hegan. Good running by Hegan. Oh, and a chance for Dugan! Derek Dugan. But the construction of that goal, without any doubt at all. The beauty of the pass from Danny Hegan. Wagstaff. Hegan and Dugan, the killer stroke on the end of it. Starting on the left side again through Parkin for Wolves, as so many of their attacks have done so far. Waxed off. Bailey's gone down the touchline. Good interception by Brian O'Neill, who's tucked his shirt in for a change. Steve Daly. Daly again, clobbering the left foot. Back to mark his full league debut with a goal, obviously. Flick on by Shannon, but Taylor gets it forward. Kirk up. Daly beginning to get good encouragement from the crowd now. Joe Kirkup for Shannon. Far side is Payne. This side, Kirkup. Gabriel. Shannon. Terry Payne on the right side. Payne, good little chip ball, and that's Kirkup. Joe Kirkup. What a neat little goal, and what a superb run. It's 1 1 now. Joe Kirker scoring his first goal of the season, and he hasn't had too many in his whole career. Go into which More goals boys. and a controversial goal penalty in the second half. Level. First free kick of the game, of the second half, that is. Going to Wolves, obviously for something somebody said. Indirect free kick. No defensive wall. Wagstaff to whack one. Oh, and what a goal! No, no! It's been ruled out. It's been ruled out. It was an indirect free kick, and referee Styles has his hand still in the air. Must be honest, I was caught too. Stokes. Gabriel the challenge with McCall. Bailey away. And that's a Southampton ball. Terry Payne taking lots of time. Gabriel for Shannon. Terry Payne. Oh, what a good return ball for Shannon. Whoops. Indirect free kick. And the... Referee being mobbed then by Southampton players. Demanding the penalty kick. But indirect inside the box, it is. 
so that none of us, including me, get caught out again. It being an indirect free kick, the ball must strike somebody before it goes into the net. I don't think Terry Payne will make the same mistake that Wagstaff did. And that's Shannon. That wasn't a bad goal at all, at all, at all. That's the way to do it while they're still hanging about. And Fox really looking desolate on his line there. Five minutes into the second half and it's 2-1 to Southampton. Wagstaff with the kick. And away by Kirk up for the corner. And the pressure still boiling down in that penalty area. That's where all the action is now. And with tempers on a razor edge, anything can happen in there. Shaw. O'Neill got it away. Parkin. Left out of it by Terry Payne. That's a free kick. And the fans quick to jump on Southampton's backs again. Egan with a kick. Stokes just up anywhere. Gabriel thundering into McCall. And O'Neill just kicking it anywhere. Chance now becoming a little vulgar from the crowd, but the sentiment's still pretty strong. Steve Daly tight in behind the Southampton bat line. Wagstar. That was Shannon who got it away. Southampton dragging everybody back to weather this storm. 15 minutes of the second half gone. And Wolves really hammering and looking for this equaliser. Bailey a long one. Aiming for Dugan. He hits it down. Kirk up away. Again, Wolves come storming in again. John McCall. Dugan must be able to chance. He's there. Derek Dugan. Dugan makes it 2 2, and there is a very disconsolate goalkeeper and a very happy Derek Dugan. Look at the smile on his face. 2 2 the scoreline. John McCall was the man who slammed the ball forward. McGrath failed in the tackle on Dugan. And he saw the opening on the far post, scores his second goal of the day. Now we're wondering, can he get another hat-trick? And this seems surely to be the long one. Dugan was in the sandwich between McGrath and Kirkup. Waxed off. Well done. Dugan just... And he's pointed to the penalty. McGrath, I think it was, who got the hand to it. Referee Styles right in the middle there. From this angle, it was difficult to see. Dugan went in on that ball. Referee Styles has pointed to the spot. Dugan is already over the ball. Dugan will be looking now for a hat trick. No, Dugan's put the ball away. The, hat, the penalty kick man will be parking. A moment of truth then for goalkeeper Martin. Ten minutes to go to the end of the game. Parker with a kick. And no, it's got to be taken again. Referee Styles was blowing his whistle as Parker went up. What a let off. And referee Styles calling people over to him. Referee Styles had blown his whistle before Parker took the kick, indicating that some infringement was on and that he didn't intend for the kick to be taken at that moment. So Parkin, who hits the post, gets himself another crack at it. And that's a very nervous fullback out there at this moment. Here he goes. That one he scores. It's 3-2 then. For Southampton. 3-2 for against Southampton. Derek Parkin. Score of one goal, Dugan going through in the picture, the score of the two previous goals. Parkin, a couple of Harvey Smith signals to anybody who cares to uh, take note of them. And a phlegmatic expression on his face. That's a free kick. Shannon sent tumbling by Taylor, number five. 
Tedder doing a fair bit of graft here this afternoon. Replacing the big Frank Munro. He's had three games earlier this season for Munro. Terry Payne, the chap who can really place a free kick so beautifully. See what he does with this one. Graft's in there. Fair bit of firing and fighting going on. It was Hugh Curran who whacked it away. Dugan then for Shaw. Dugan has Hegan to play with out there. The Fool's got another one now. It would be the killer punch. Hegan. There it is, Steve Daly. Steve Daly. And there's the picture of a happy fellow. 4-2 the Wolves now. And Steve Daly scoring a goal in the first full league match that he's ever played in. And it all looked so easy. But it was Danny Hegan who set it up. Dugan was involved. Hegan, the man who set up the earlier goal for Dugan, setting up a perfect unmissable chance then for Steve Daly, and he took it perfectly. So a miserable afternoon for Southampton that for a long time had looked such a promising one. That controversial penalty, incidentally uh, Billy Wright who was at the game, uh, says that the referee told Derek Parkin, who was taking it for Wolves, not to take it until he, the referee, gave him the whistle. And it looked very much as though Parkin was trying to jump the gun. And you'll notice that the referee was whistling up just before he took the kick, uh, obviously to stop Parkin taking it, but Parkin was already well into his stride. He hit the post but the referee wasn't ready for the penalty to be taken, so obviously it had to be taken again, which seems to be uh, a little generous towards Wolves, a little hard on Southampton, but the referee must make sure that everything's right when a penalty is being taken, and that's what Keith Styles was doing up there at Molyneux yesterday. Right, let's clear that up. Uh, let's get on with some of your letters now. We've mentioned on the programme before how quick you are to spot things, and Terry Amos of Broccoli noticed that when Leeds United played at Highbury uh, recently, some of their players wore V-neck shirts with short sleeves, and others wore round necks with long sleeves. Had we we noticed this and why was it? In fact we hadn't noticed it uh, but now I think we can have a look at it. There's Billy Bremner with a v-neck shirt and short sleeves and in a moment I think we shall see a Leeds United player who I think will be Jack Charlton who will be wearing long uh, sleeves and a round neck. But there we are, we hadn't noticed it. Why was it? In fact we went to Peter Lorimer for that and he said uh, when the weather's a little warm Don Revy leaves it entirely to the players. They can either wear short sleeves or long sleeves whichever they feel most comfortable wearing. So there's the answer to that one. The next uh, letter today, in fact, comes from uh, Susan Jackson of Guildford, who says that she's very disappointed when she hears these Tottenham fans booing Martin Peters. Susan says she thinks that Martin is the tops and reminds us of all the valuable goals he scored. Can we show her one? Indeed we can, one, the valuable one that he scored against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane earlier this season. What a goal! A magnificent effort by Martin Peters, right... Incidentally, of course, that was a magnificent goal, and the second Spurs goal on that day, we said that Martin Peters had played a big part in that, and Mike England himself was quick to point out that, in fact, it was his header that led to Gil Zine's equaliser, a point that was also supported by another of our viewers, Mr W.G. Hobbs of Walworth. A long throw, this last desperate throw, quite literally, of Tottenham Hotspur. Chivers right into the middle. Peters a header, and this is a... It it's a goal, they've done it! Yes, unmistakably Mike England who headed that ball on for Alan Gilzean. Our apologies to Mike, he was right and we were wrong. But now we come to our last match today and it's mighty Manchester United. Uh, yesterday they attracted 33,000 fans to Huddersfield where the uh, Yorkshire television cameras were, where the commentator was Keith Macklin. Huddersfield are in the stripes, we join the match in the second half. Stand by for another Manchester United explosion. Out comes Stemia, beautiful catch. Kidd, Charlton, Kidd, inside McGill, Garling running, Garling and Clark getting there with the first timer. Charlton, Sandler, Kid, Morgan, Sadler, Kid trying to find Morgan, he has another chance from that header from Chapman, Law again for Best, Best 
Still going. This is one of them, is it? It's Law. Chance looks on Mark. And it's over the his then. What a chapter of misses. But the ball is still... Well, it was still in United's court. But first best couldn't put it home. Then Law and the ball went over Charlton's head. <laughs> Worthington, Smith, Lawson, and there's been some pushing in the penalty area again. Cherry, Hutt, Garling waiting for it, the Charlton, hooking it on for best, Clark, Law taking it off the toe of Clark, to Charlton, and wide of the post, and Manchester United really generating quite a head of steam at the moment, and this man, Bobby Charlton, right in the thick of it all the time. Darling, Darling body check by Smith. Sadler taking it quickly to Morgan. Morgan trying to go outside Chapman. In goes Best. It has to be George Best. Keep him quiet for so long. Best. Kid. Charlton. Charlton breaking. Kid on the left. Darling and Best moving into the middle. Law inevitably. Garling leaving it for Law. This time the flag does not go up and Law has scored. He's poached one at last. And I wonder if he'll give a look. And the line would no, it's a goal. There's most definitely a goal. 26 minutes have gone. Morgan. Morgan going round Hutt. McGill coming across to help. Down goes Morgan. Up goes the linesman's flag. A free kick to Manchester United. Morgan with the kick. Charlton. Hunt getting it away, it's three against three now, it's Lawson, Chris Wickey and Worthington, Hoy coming up to reinforce them, Dunn Sadler back, a good shot, a good save! What a fine snapshot that one by Jimmy Lawson. No, the other way. Worthington, foul throw. Sadler, Morgan, McGill coming up like an express train. Law, Morgan, Campbell, Morgan, and McGill looks as though the book may be coming out, and Jimmy McGill won't like that, he's already under suspended sentence, is Jimmy McGill. <laughs> 
Sadler with the free kick. Ellum leaving it. Kid getting up. McGill. Ball to Law. What a sitter. Kid. Charlton. Kid. Who's going to hit it? Charlton. What a mess. Well, it, either Kid or Charlton could have had that gift. Charlton, the man who slotted it in for number three with the Huddersfield Town defence in an absolutely hopeless tangle. So, 3-0 to Manchester United, back on top of the first division. That's it from the programme today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, remember, on the ball in World of Sport next Saturday lunchtime, the big match next Sunday afternoon. We can't leave you with anyone better today than Peter Shilton. Redknapp trying again to get behind that. Uh, Leicester defence has cost it for Robson. And my goodness, how did Shilton get that one? Moore and Robson. Again, the angle wasn't right. Bonds and a great save by Shilton. Crossed again there for Brooking. Hit this time and what a save! What a